ഓം നമസ്കാരം നാരായണം നമസ്കരിച്ച നരം ചെയ്യുവ നടത്തുമം ദേവിയും സരസ്വതിയും വ്യാസം തത്വ ജയം ഉദീരയെ നഷ്ടപ്രായേഷു ഭദ്രേഷു നിത്യം ഭാഗവത സേവയ ഭഗവതി ഉത്തമ ശ്ലോകെ ഭക്തി ഭക്തി നാസ്തിക്കി സോ റീഡിംഗ് ഫ്രോം ശ്രീമദ് ബോധ ഫസ്റ്റ് ക്യാൻ ടു തേർഡ് ചാപ്റ്റർ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ടു ട്വന്റി ടു ചാപ്റ്റർ ടൈറ്റിൽ ഇസ് കൃഷ്ണ ഇസ് ദ സോഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ആൾ ഇൻകാർനേഷൻസ് സൂത ടെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ സൂത സെഡ് ഇൻ ദ ബീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദ ക്രിയേഷൻ ദ ലോഡ് ഫസ്റ്റ് എക്സ്പാൻഡ് ഹിംസെൽഫ് ഇൻ ദ യൂണിവേഴ്സൽ ഫോം ഓഫ് ദ പുരുഷ ഇൻകാർനേഷൻ and manifested all the ingredients of the material creation and thus at first there was a creation of the 16 principles of material action this was for the purpose of creating the material universes text 2 a part of the purusha lies down within the water of the universe from the navel like navel lake of his body sprouts a lotus stem and from the lotus flower atop this stem brahma the master of all engineers in the universe becomes manifest text 3 it is believed that all the universal planetary systems are situated on the extensive body of the purusha but he has nothing to do with the created material ingredients his body is eternally in spiritual existence par excellence text 4 the devotees with their perfect eyes see the transcendental form of the purusha who has thousands of legs thighs arms and faces all extraordinary in that body there are thousands of heads ears eyes and noses they are decorated with thousands of helmets and glowing earrings and are adorned with garlands text 5 this form the second manifestation of the purusha is the source and indestructible seed of multifarious incarnations within the universe from the particles and portions of this form different living entities like demigods men and others are created ഓഫ് ക്രിയേഷൻ ദർ വർ ദ ഫോർ അൺമാരിഡ് സൺസ് ഓഫ് ബ്രഹ്മ ദ കുമാരസ് ഹൂ ബീങ് സിറ്റുവേറ്റഡ് ഇൻ എ വോ ഓഫ് സിലിബസി സിലിബസി അണ്ടർ വെൻ സിവിയർ ആസ്ട്രിറ്റീസ് for realization of the absolute truth text 7 the supreme enjoyer of all sacrifices accepts the incarnation of a boar the second incarnation and for the welfare of the earth he lifted the earth from the nether regions of the universe text 8 in the millennium of the rishis the personality of godhead accepted the third empowered incarnation in the form of devashi narada who is a great sage among the demigods he collected expositions of the vedas which deal with devotional service and which inspire non fruitive action text 9 in the fourth incarnation the lord became nara and narayana the twin sons of the wife of king dharma thus he undertook severe and exemplary penances to control the senses text 10 the fifth incarnation named lord kapila is foremost among perfected beings he gave an exposition of the creative elements and metaphysics of asuri brahmana for in course of time this knowledge has been lost text 11 the sixth incarnation of the purusha was the son of the sage atri he was born from the womb of anasuya who prayed for an incarnation he spoke on the subject of transcendence to alarka prelada and others yadu haihaya etc text 12 The seventh incarnation was Yajna, the son of Prajapati Ruchi and his wife Akuti. He controlled the period during the change of the Swayambhu Manu and was assisted by demigods such as his son Yama. Text 13. The eighth incarnation was King Rishabha, son of King Nabi and his wife Meru Devi. In, in this incarnation, the Lord showed the path of perfection, which is followed by those who have fully controlled their senses and who are honored by all orders of life. text 14 o brahmanas in this nine, in the ninth incarnation the lord prayed for by the sages accepted the body of a king prithu who cultivated the land to yield various produce and for that reason that was beautiful and attractive text 15 when there was a complete inundation after the period of the chakshusha manu 
and the whole world was deep within water. The Lord accepted the form of a fish and protected Vaivasutamanu, keeping him upon a boat. Text 16. The eleventh incarnation of the Lord took the form of a tortoise, whose shell served as a pivot for the Mandarach Mandarachala hill, which was being used as a churning rod by the thieves and atheists of the universe. Text 17. In the twelfth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Dhanavantari, and in the thirteenth, he eluded the atheists by the charming beauty of a woman and gave nectar to demigods to drink. Text 18. In the fourteenth incarnation, the Lord appeared as Rasimha and bifurcated the strong body of the atheist Hiranyakasipu with his nails, just as a carpenter pierces cane. Text 19. In the fifteenth incarnation, the Lord assumed the form of a dwarf Brahmana, Vamana, and visited the arena of sacrifice arranged by Maharaj Bali. Although at heart he was willing to regain the kingdom of the three planetary systems, he simply asked for a donation of three steps of land. Text 20. In the 16th incarnation of the Godhead, the Lord, as Brugupati, annihilated the administrative class, Kshatriyas, 21 times, being angry with them because of their rebellion against the Brahmanas, the intelligent class. Text 21. Thereafter, in the 17th incarnation of Godhead, Sri Vasudeva appeared in the womb of Satyavati through Parasaramuni, and he divided the one Veda into several branches and sub-branches, seeing that the people in general were less intelligent. Text 22. In the 18th incarnation, the Lord appeared as King Rama, in order to perform some pleasing work for the demigods. He exhibited superhuman powers by controlling the Indian Ocean and then killing the atheist King Ravana, who was on the other side of the sea. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll try to go through Om Ajnana Timiran Dasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Mevitam Nena Tasme Shri Guravena Maha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Krishna Ebutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswata Deve Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyatya Desatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vedadhara Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakti Vedanta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare um, So yesterday we completed the second chapter. Uh, third chapter begins. Um, so yesterday uh, in the last verse we saw that uh, Srila Sutta Goswami tries to answer the questions of the pages um, and he answers question 4. Um, explain about all the uh, Purusha Vatas uh, and uh, and also, why did Lord Vasudev actually take birth in the womb of mother? That was the last verse that we saw yesterday. So, in continuation, uh, now um, Srila uh, Sutta Goswami is going to answer uh, one of the six questions, which is to explain all the Leela Avatars. The sages asked, please explain all about the Leela Avatars of Krishna. Um, so, th that is the theme for the third chapter. So, before beginning to answer those, Srila Sutta Goswami is first giving details of the Purusha Avatars. So what do the Purusha Avatars do? That was just mentioned in one, one or two verses previously, but now he is going to detail in the first five verses. So first, uh, in the first verse, he is talking about Mahavishnu, who is also known as Karanodakusha Vishnu. So uh, Sutta Goswami explains that Lord first expands himself into um, Purusha incarnation and, all, and manifested all the ingredients necessary. So Krishna is the one who does the primary creation. By setting, making sure all the ingredients are which are necessary for creation that is there. And thus, at first, there was the creation of the 16 principal elements of material action. Like all the senses, uh, knowledge acquiring senses, working senses and everything. All the material ingredients are made ready by Krishna. Of course, we will see he is not going to do the creation, but he is making sure the ingredients are ready first. And... And this was the purpose for creating material universe. Like Prabhupada explains in the purport that uh, there are two, there are different types of uh, spiritual beings, living beings, uh, Nitya Siddha and Nitya Bhadda. We are all Nitya Bhadda, mean, meaning we are all eternally conditioned. We are all eternally conditioned to uh, uh, lord over this material world. And Krishna is actually creating this space, right? 
and he's creating all the necessary ingredients like mahatvatva and so many other things to for this creation to happen and then in the second verse the same krishna first he expands as mahavishnu as karanoda vishay vishnu he, he secondary expansion like we, like we saw yesterday in the second chapter he enters into every universe that he creates as garboda kshay vishnu from whose navel a lotus flower sprouts and on top of the lotus flower that lotus flower is the one which holds all the jeevas or the souls which are ready to accept a body based on our karma and who decides what body we get of course karma is also an energy of krishna but krishna doesn't directly is not directly involved in this creation he appoints a jeeva or a soul who is evolved substantially uh, over 50 to 100 lifetimes perfectly and he he becomes brahma and krishna gives the opportunity to such a jeeva or a soul to become brahma and help him in creation and that's why in the second verse we saw that brahma is also known as the engineer of the universe and uh, um, and then uh, krishna expands as shirodakshay vishnu also we saw he ex- he expands as the third vishnu form within this universe and he is he is as paramatma in all of our hearts and he is also present in every atom of the universe now if we try to open for those of us who are a little bit scientifically in- uh, inclined um, if we try to understand the atomic structure of most of the atoms Uh, there are so many things that cannot be explained how certain atoms protons and neutrons interact with each other so perfectly that certain chemical compounds are all formed which is beyond the understanding even among scientific community so um, so those things are actually um, a cause created by krishna sitting as uh, lord vishnu in the atom atomic particle which we can't even see with our naked eye and he also stands as paramatma and he is also there within this universe um, in a in a land called shwetadweep where uh, he resides on the bed of anandasesh and where he is there for addressing all the problems within this universe and where lord all, all the demigods also go for all, so resolving all the problems so prabhupad says one who knows these plenary features of the personality of godhead knows godhead properly and thus the knower becomes freed from material conditions of birth death old age and disease as it is confirmed in bhagavad gita right so prabhupada is giving us the benediction of actually knowing these three vishnu forms of purusha avatars by at least simply by understanding this through the pages of shrimad bhagavatam and the mercy of acharyas we can cross over the four uh, four miseries in our life nobody will be a scared of death anymore this is the statement of prabhupad he is an acharya so we have to take it as it is and in the third uh, verse uh, bhagavatam explains about the universal planetary systems and it is imagined to be situated on the extensive body of garboda kshay vishnu who is eternally spiritual see krishna is always spiritual even though he is within this universe he is not touched by any material elements uh he is satchidananda vigra he is always spiritual hmm? he is not affected by any of the material ingredients that he is creating that is the difference between god and us we are eternally conditioned we can be conditioned by the material things around us but krishna is not like that that is definition of god uh if you remember the very first verse in shrimad bhagavatam it says janma dasya yatah meaning god is uh the cause of all causes that is the primary definition for god if anybody he or she is proclaiming themselves to be god this is the barometer that prabhupada says that we have to check can they create anything and everything that is there in this universe and then in the fourth verse uh the devotees with perfect eyes can see the supreme lord so that is the theme that prabhupada mentions and how can we see krishna not with this eyes because our eyes is conditioned with so many material um attachments within this material world but we can see krishna through the eyes of the pure devotees who are eyes are anointed with pure love because the pure devotees of krishna no they have actually seen prabhupad rights so we have to take information of the transcendental form of the lord from persons who have actually seen him with perfect eyes how they have seen smeared with pure devotional service That's why in Bhagavad Gita also it says, "Tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya 
उपदेक्षी ते ज्ञान ज्ञानी तत्वदर्शि अतत्वदर्शी सो वी हेव टू गो ऑन एंक्वायर अबाउट द एब्सुल ट्रूथ और कृष्ण फ्रॉम अ पर्सन हू हेज सीन कृष्ण नॉट प्रोक्लेमिंग आर्टिफिशियली बट बाय प्रैक्टिसिंग अनलॉयड प्योर भक्ति विदाउट एनी टिंज ऑफ मेटीरियल अटैचमेंट्स इन दिस वर्ल्ड दे हैव एक्चुअली सीन कृष्ण बिकॉज वेन दे स्पीक वी विल नो फॉर श्योर दे हैव सीन कृष्ण इट इज अ फैक्ट so in order to find such people such sadhus we have to hear that's what we saw yesterday in the second chapter that is the first primary qualification for a person to practice bhakti is to hear and when we hear such sound vibrations we will immediately know this person has seen krishna it is it is for sure and by such method propat says with patience and perseverance we can realize the subject a uh, transcendental subject matter regarding the absolute truth and its different forms otherwise krishna remains formless he doesn't reveal himself to ordinary people that's the verdict of shrimad bhagavatam and then in the fifth verse the source and seeds of all forms is garbhodaka kshaya vishnu is what uh, it's a very big purport but the essence is um uh, the garbhodaka kshaya vishnu form being the source of even shirodaka kshaya vishnu is the source and he is indestructible and of various incarnations within this universe right so so from him only all the devatas the jeevas and the animals and every living form is created within this universe like explained with the help of brahma brahma lord brahma uh, lord vishnu creates populates this entire universe based on our karma we all get different body fortunately we have a human body to understand in this life and then from 6 to next 21 verses and the 22 incarnations of krishna are mentioned it is very difficult actually to do justice to really discuss shrimad bhagavatam explains almost of almost of all most of the incarnations in detail in various chapters so in 10 minutes it's very difficult but we can take probably some primary incarnations and uh, some key key points about what we can remember about them so first is kumara kumara who they came their incarnations uh, primary purpose was that they were situated in the vow of celibacy and they underwent severe austerities for realization of absolute truth they wanted to show the principle of brahmanical qualification one of the qualification to be a brahmana is to be celibate celibate means at heart even though a brahmana may have a family kids at heart they are celibate meaning uh, they they want to procreate or generate children only for the procreation of krishna conscious children not for sense gratification that itself is a great tapasya great austerity right so the four kumaras were situated in that i mean of course they did not get married but they were their primary purpose was to be strict brahmacharis or disciplinary brahmacharis celibate so that was their uh, role to propagate primarily of course later they became devotees and then in seventh verse krishna came as varaha avatar and he lifted the earth when hiranyaksha actually uh, plundered this earth the earth actually got submerged into the garbhodaka ocean and uh, lord krishna took the form of boar in one of the other discussions the one um, we were discussing and prabhupada actually we found that prabhupada the rights in another purport in shrimad bhagavatam why krishna takes of all animals why boar right very interesting uh, prabhupada writes that boar because uh, in general pigs have the tendency to go and smell on smell on filthy things and then try to find things so similarly when the earth was actually submerged in the garbhodaka ocean krishna took the form of boar prabhupada writes so that just like how the boar or uh, pig uh, family have the tendency to smell and find things krishna finds see how he is this is all his leela by the way we should not think that krishna is like an ordinary person that boar was not even an ordinary boar we will see in the third canto he was so humongously big he was so big that uh, even the devatas were astounded and then the next incarnation is devarshi narada Sri Narad Muni is a Shakti Avesh incarnation. He is an empowered incarnation of Krishna to propagate bhakti. Wherever Sri Narad Muni goes, 
he will make that person a devotee of krishna according to time place and circumstance shri nargmuni will go and preach and make that person a devotee for sure and in the same line shri prabhupad comes and he he made so many people devotees right and in the third uh, uh, ninth verse uh, the fourth incarnation is naranarayan rishi uh, their purpose was to undertake severe austerities and exemplary penances to control senses naranarayan rishi who are situated in badrikashram even today in the himalayan mountains in a different realm their purpose was to propagate exemplary control of senses nobody can beat uh, like it is mentioned the definition of god in vishnu purana prabhupad explained the definition of god can be so one who has all six opulences in full right fame strength um beauty um i forgot the remaining three but there six opulences um that is in full in god we all have minute portions some may have a little bit beauty some may be extremely opulent rich but it's all small small quantities but one who has all six opulences in full uh, that that is god and naranarayan rishi actually he exhibited renunciation no one can be a renunciant as big as naranarayan rishi even the beautiful most damsels couldn't agitate him that is definition of god he is not dependent on anybody in this creation fifth is kapila dev and he propounded sankhya philosophy uh, philosophy we'll see in the third canto and then the sixth incarnation is uh, um is uh, yeah datatreya datatreya was born of atri muni and anasuya um, that again we'll see in the fourth canto uh, he spoke about the subject matter of transcendence to uh, alarka pralad and others other devotees and then in seventh incarnation is yagna he was born to prajapati ruchi and wife arkuti so yagna so sometimes it is mentioned that in certain manus there is no qualified person to become indra by the way indra brahma chandra uh, varuna they are all positions they are not personal they are personalities but uh, every creation uh, certain persons qualified persons take that position just like how how people become prime ministers and presidents in this creation in this earth similarly people take positions of indra so sometimes there is no qualified person to become indra so it's such one of the manus uh, lord himself krishna himself took the position of indra and that's when he took the avatar of yagna and he ruled the administration of the universal affairs because indra is the chief of the devadas he is the chief of the demigods and the eighth incarnation is king rishabha and uh, we will see in very much detail in the fifth canto about king rishabha dev he was a son of king navi and his wife meru devi and uh, maharaj rishabha dev the son of king navi and meru devi was an incarnation of the lord and he actually propagated um, how to perfect our lives not based on time um in material sense gratification he was instructing his 100 sons it's very very famous and very very instructive we have to time and again uh, study those chapters to really remind us what is the purpose of our life uh, prabhupada writes foolish men seek after material sense pleasure as a substitute for real happiness but such foolish men forget the temporary so called happiness derived from sense pleasures is also enjoyed enjoyed by dogs and hogs the human life is meant for attaining eternal and unlimited happiness by spiritual realization so such a person who can understand that the human life is meant for spiritual realization by the mercy of acharya they are called dhira sober and only such a person can understand that they are not this body this is what krishna explains in the second chapter and in the 14th verse the ninth incarnation is explained of maharaj prithu and uh, his um, his role was he cultivated land by to yield various uh, products thus the earth became beautiful and attractive he made sure that earth was cultivating sufficient produce for everyone to be happy and everyone to gradually elevate towards krishna and he was again an empowered incarnation of krishna um, so prabhupad explains uh, in the purport that the intelligent class of men do not occupy royal throne because during the uh, uh, reign uh, 
regime of uh, Maharaj Prithu, uh, uh, there were some Brahmanas who were devotees, and because there were some unpious kings, we, we cannot go in detail of the past time, they actually get rid of, of all the uh, unpious kings and they actually bring, they actually do some uh, mystic things to bring uh, the Lord as the king who comes in the form of Maharaj Prithu. And Prabhupada writes, this is the role of an intelligent class of men who are the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas don't take political post. If we see in today's world, uh, if somebody becomes a great tapasvi, after a point, if they are not devotees, they become political leaders. We see in today's world. But that is not the verdict of the scriptures. A Brahmana is never supposed to take, because they are not interested in political post. They are only interested in elevating people, not to take any political post. They never aspire for any political post. That is the real qualified Brahmana. And uh, 15th verse, um, in the end of Chakshusha Mantra, a Matsya Avatar appeared. Hmm? And this again we will see in the 8th canto. A Matsya Avatar appeared for protecting the Vedas. And he also wanted to give mercy to his dear devotee Satyavrata Muni, who in the next creation became the Manu. Why was Sattva Manu? Uh, so that was the purpose of Matsya Avatar. And in the 16th uh, verse, in the 11th incarnation of the Lord, the form of tortoise, he took the form of Kurma Avatar. Again, a very lengthy pastime. Uh, Krishna appears in the form of Kurma Avatar when the demigods and the demons were churning the milk ocean to take nectar from the ocean. Uh, the Mandara hill that they were using to churn the ocean was so huge and humongously heavy. And Krishna appeared in an 800 mile radius Kurma Avatar and the Mandara mountain was on top of him. And he was not an ordinary tortoise like we see here in our day-to-day -day vision. He was 800 miles long and it is explained in Bhagavatam that the churning of the Mandara mountain was like itching on his back. It's like how if we have an itch on our back, it feels so nice. So Krishna was feeling so nice when the demons and the demigods were churning. It's such a fascinating pastime, a lot of lessons for us to learn. Uh, in 12th and the 13th incarnation, during that churning of the ocean, many things come out. And at one point, Krishna comes as Danvantri and he gives the pot of nectar to the devatas and the demigods and they start fighting with each other. Who will get the nectar? And then in order to resolve that problem, Krishna appears again in the form of Mohini Avatar to bewilder the demons. And the demons think that Oh, this Mohini avatar, I mean, they don't realize it's Krishna. They think it's some beautiful young lady. And they get enamored by her beauty that they think that this is only for us. She is only for me. This is our mentality, right? So when we get attracted to different things within this creation, we think that object is for our enjoyment. That is a demoniac quality. According to the pages of Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, Krishna wanted to teach this. And the demons were actually enamored by uh, Krishna's beauty and eventually the nectar goes to the demigods. And that is the 13th incarnation of Mohini Avatar. And then in the 18th incarnation, or the 14, 18th was 14th incarnation, Krishna appears as Lord Narasimha Dev in order to protect this devotee Prahlad Maharaj and annihilate Hiranyakashipu. And then in the 19th verse, uh, we see the 15th incarnation, Krishna appeared in the form of Lord Bhamana Dev. Yeah, so so although willing, he Vamanadeva appears in the form of dwarf um, as the son of Aditi. Again, a very lengthy pastime. But uh, Bali Maharaj, he came to came to deliver Bali Maharaj. Why? Because Bali Maharaj was coming in the family lineage of Pralad Maharaj. If we saw the previous verse, Pralad Maharaj was already a great devotee. This is another thing that we have to remember. If we if we really love our family members. Many, many, many of many of the outside people think, oh, these Krishna conscious people are crazy. They don't worry about family things. Of course, we worry about our family members. How? Our acharyas say that if we really love our uncles and mothers and fathers and aunties and whoever our dear dear ones are, if we become a sincere devotee in this lifetime, Krishna will take care of every single family member in our family, future. 10, 21 generations and 21 generations behind. This is the promise that Krishna gives us Narasimha Dev 
and he does make that promise come true. How? He comes as Vamanadev when Bali Maharaj was in the same demoniac family as Hiranya Kashipu, was plundering the Devatas, wanting to take all their kingdom. And he actually beat up Indra and he took all his opulence. And at that time, Aditi, being the mother of all the Devatas, he, she prayed for Krishna for help. And Krishna comes in the form of Vamanadev for only one purpose, to deliver Bali Maharaj. See, this is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. This so much faith we can get from such pastimes that we don't have to uh, worry too much. Oh, am I not? Uh, uh, of course, we have to do our duty. Doesn't mean that we become irresponsible. But the main principle is that we have to become Krishna conscious very seriously. That is the point that Bhagavatam is trying to tell us. If we become very sincere devotees, or at least try to become sincere devotees, Krishna will take care. There may be some turbulences here and there, but Krishna will take care of all the situations and all the family members and so that they are also gradually elevated towards them. That is the promise given by Krishna. Bali Maharaj was eventually elevated by Krishna wanted to show through Bali Maharaj's example that he wanted to give everything to Krishna. Atma Nivedan. He wanted to give everything to Krishna. He gave all his opulences and he even gave himself in the end. When Krishna became so big in the form of and he, with two steps, with one step, he covered the entire universe. With the other step, he uh, covered the entire planetary system. And the third step, he didn't know where to keep. So, Bali Maharaj bowed his head and Lord Vamanadev keeps his third step on his head. And he said, I am surrendered to you, Krishna. That is Bali Maharaj. And in the 16th incarnation, in verse 20, uh, Krishna appears as Parashuram in the ninth canto. He appears as Parashuram, where he annihilates all the uh, Kshatriyas who are posing to be nice kings, right? and who are plundering this earth, not being pious kings, not upbringing. Because to take a responsible position in this world, Prabhupada explains in a very subtle way in the fourth canto, he explains that if you take any responsible position in this world, be it a mother or a father or a king or a president or whatever responsible position it is in this world, we are actually responsible for our dependence karma. It is a fact. We are sharing their karma. If we become a king, in the fourth canto, it explained, Maharaj Kutu explains that if somebody does something good, we share their karma in their next life. Good karma. We may not be directly involved. Somebody may be a president. So, but if the people in the country or the state, they do some... Uh, unwanted things, killing people or plundering people, the head of the state or the country is directly responsible for their karma. Very, very subtle. We are not even aware of these things. Right? So, in order to annihilate such kings who are not responsibly acting, Lord Krishna comes as Parashuram and he killed, annihilated all these irresponsible Kshatriyas who are posing, posing themselves to be Kshatriyas. And then in 21st verse, Krishna appears as Srila Vyasadeva to propound the Vedas because initially Veda was one. We will see in the first few chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, Veda was only one. It was only only one Veda, Atharva Veda. And it was all in sound form. But we were also unintelligent, meaning we were not able to, at least population in general, we were not able to understand the purpose of the Veda. So, Srila Vyasadeva propounded and he divided that one single Veda into four Vedas. Sama, Yajur, Rig and Atharva. And then also into different Puranas, Itihasas, so that we can get the essence of the Vedas through historical facts. Through Puranas and Mahabharat kind of history fact, historical facts. They are not mythology. There are so many archaeological evidences that Puranas actually happen. The histories that are mentioned in Puranas actually happen. Mahabharat actually happened. So through these historical events, Vyasadeva wanted to divide that one Veda into different branches and sub-branches so that it really gets into our consciousness through a bona fide disciplic succession. And we really understand the purpose of the Vedas. And he did this so that because we are all less intelligent. All classes, not just um, any one particular class. For all in unintelligent classes, Vedavyas, because he is compassionate, he is incarnation of Krishna, direct incarnation of Krishna. So he is compassionate to deliver all of us. So he gave this Veda. So we must study Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Right? 
His Grace Amarinda Prabhu, he was mentioning in one of his very old classes, 50 years ago, nobody knew that Srimad Bhagavatam even existed. And it was only there in Devanagari form, in Sanskrit form, and the Acharya's commentary also in Sanskrit form. Only after Srila Prabhupada came, now almost, um, at least in the devotees' home or who are wanting to be devotees, every single of their homes have Srimad Bhagavatam set at their home. So he says that we should not just keep it uh, in a rack with plastic wraps on it. We should take it out, remove the, remove the wraps and study at least one page every day. It's such a great benediction for us to have Srimad Bhagavatam at our home. So we should study Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And the last verse, in the 18th incarnation, Lord Krishna appears as King Rama. And he exhibited such superhuman powers. Of course, he wanted to, his incarnation was to be an ideal human being. That was his uh, teaching when he came as Lord Ramachandra. Um, but uh, Prabhupada explains in the purport that uh, as conditioned living beings, we want to actually lord over this material world always. Right? As scientists, we want to go to different planets. But Prabhupada explains in the purport that our body is made of earthly element. So we can sustain only on earth. I mean, I may artificially try to go to different planets and try to live there by creating some space suits, but only for some time. We cannot live forever because our body is not made like that. It is not made of the element which is needed to sustain in that particular planet. Like Prabhupada explains, in order to sustain in sun planet, we need to have a fiery body. Right? In order to be, just like how fishes need a water sustaining body to sustain inside the water. Similarly, we also need a different body to sustain a different planet. Even we cannot sustain ourselves within the water, even within this material world. It is not possible for a long time. Right? So, like that, Ramana, what he did was he wanted to construct a staircase from earth to the heavenly planets. See, this is, this is the mentality. We are all Ramanas. Our Acharya explained, we are all mini Ramanas. We may not be as powerful as that Ramana. But we are all in our own ways, Ravanas, trying to exploit this material nature. So what did King Rama do? So when Ravana, he didn't want to exploit only the material nature. When Lord Rama appeared, he wanted to exploit the uh, concert of Ra Lord Rama also, Mother Sita. Same situation that we are in. The material resources that are there around us in the form of money and the wealth, that is all Lakshmi Devi. And we are trying to utilize it for our, our own sense gratification. And what is Lakshmi Devi doing? In Vaikuntha, she is serving Lord Narayana always. And in the highest form as Srimadhi Radharani, she is always serving Sri Krishna in, in Vrajbhumi, Vrindavan. So our duty is to use all the wealth that is being given to us by God in the service of God. And that is when we actually have attain happiness. Otherwise, as mini Ravanas, we are always frustrated in this world. That is a fact. And what did Lord Ramachandra do? He constructed an ocean. So Prabhupada expands on that superhuman powers that is mentioned in the translation. He constructed uh, a path from one side of the ocean to the other ocean using stones. And it was not ordinary stones or constructed by cement or some big, big rods like how we see now. It was a miraculous stone where simply by writing the name Lord Ram, the floats were floating. Prabhupada writes, simply by writing Lord Ram's name, the stones were floating. Why can't we understand that how the planets are floating? Uh, Krishna can make a stone float on water. Why can't he make planets float? We can call it gravity. We can term anything. But Krishna is making the planets float. And uh, that is what is being mentioned here. Um, we will continue from verse 23 uh, the next time when we study Srimad Bhagavatam. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Nithai Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Gaur, Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare